welcome down to the Omega Dubai Moonlight Classic Pro-Am, which promises to be one of the most unique events that I've ever actually been part of. So here's what's happening in this vid. The Pro-Am is over 36 holes, so today and tomorrow. I'm playing with LPGA player Alison Lee. So it's a team event, I'm gonna be playing off a plus two handicap and hopefully contributing merrily to the overall success in our victory. A few good shots yesterday, I'm getting very confident. I've also got a little comp going on with Olivia Cook and Jazzy Golfer, both of who are playing within the Pro-Am. First things first though, have a lovely welcome gift to the Pro-Am, which has hat balls, sanitary kit, face mask, sanitizer, couple of letters with some discounts, beautiful water bottle, but also three free Vokey SM8 wedges which is nice. I'm actually going to be giving them to my brand manager, David, because his wedges are disgusting. I think that's a good use of them. Look how shiny they are. So when I said I was going to give these to David, I mean, that was, oh, well, that was like 20 seconds ago. So do you think he'll actually like these though? What do you reckon? Mm. I mean, I think he's probably right. Mm. Okay, fine. So I've got to my first tee of the day, which is hole number two, unusually early, and I'm a bit of a loss of what to actually do. I've literally never been this early to a tee time. I kind of just stood out here on my own. Well, me. Well, <laughs> of course, and everyone watching, yeah, we're all in this together. So those nerves percolate a little bit more. I did actually hit some shots on the range though, and I'm pleased to say and report that I'm striking it above average for a 24 handicap, so ready to go. So here is our professional for a few days. Hello. How are we? Hi, good. Nice to meet you. Yes, you too. So I'm glad you finally got here. Mm -hmm. Alison had the smoothest journey uh, to Dubai of anyone I've ever known. Yeah. It was only 50, only 50 hours. It was only from California. So it's only 50 hours. So I mean, that's fine. It's that's, fine. I'm here. That's all that matters. It's here and we're ready. And of course, you are now looking at the winning Pro-Am team. <laughs> We're calling it. You heard it here first. Okay. So, but we will reconvene somewhere during the round and then after the round, hopefully after Alison has shot a 60... <laughs> something. <laughs> Five. Okay. Awesome. I'd like that. <laughs> That'd be Sounds great. Good. Yeah, there you go. Pre-round prediction. Also in my team, we have Victoria and Nisha. Hi. Hi. Now these two are keeping me uh, very much in check today. They've already shouted at me six times, <laughs> and so I really need to get my game in order. round I think as a team I think we're about six under which isn't too bad I think Allison's pretty steady at one uh, you've missed all my uh, best shots Jacob Sorry, yeah. now you come back this is gonna be the curse curse of the camera I'm actually playing all right Mary Mary knows I'm playing all right aren't I Mary I'm doing all right the drives are outstanding <laughs> hashtag outstanding thank you very much <laughs> Round of 72 today, how are you feeling? <laughs> Please, bogey free round. I had nine birdies out there. That's right, nine. Very good off the tee, but I've got to be honest, it's just the LAB on the greens. I was rolling the rock. Nothing was missing. I had one 
disgusting horseshoe. But apart from that, it was solid. Alison played pretty steady. She struggled a little bit on the par threes and just didn't hold quite as many putts as maybe she would have expected. But tomorrow is a different day. I expect it to come out all guns blazing and post a low one. Thank you, Tanti. Thank you. I won't be taking any more questions now. I've got to go to the buffet, uh, which is about to pack up. Thank you. Welcome to a new section of the channel I like to call Serious Talk, where I talk in a ominous tone, play an underbed of serious music, and talk about something which is on my mind. And this is a part of the video that actually didn't need to be included, but I thought it probably needed to be said. I thought it only right to pay homage to the organizers of this event. Sometimes we, and I include myself within this, start to think of events as a fully formed entity. You sit back, you enjoy the action, and really you think of the whole process as just coming into being, it already being ready-made. But this week I've seen a completely different side of that, especially the way that COVID has affected proceedings. So just to give you an indication, let me tell you about the process that we went through to come cover this event as media. So prior to flying out, we had to get our test within 96 hours of flying, and that was back the throat, up the nose, swap. Once at the hotel, we had to have another COVID test. Every player and everyone within the inner bubble had to do this as well. That involved having a probe last used in the Mars mission inserted deep into my skull. And that negative test was turned around in 15 hours. Once that was sorted, we were then in the inner bubble, a soft and squishy safe zone which you cannot pop. And that meant we could only go from our room to the golf course via a sanitized courtesy car into segregated areas within the golf club, cover the event, and then once we left the game, back into the car and back straight into the hotel room. Now remember, this was repeated 56 times for the players alone. And you need to factor into this all the tournament staff, all the rest of the media, caddies, and everybody else. And thrown to that, we had a two-day pro-amp where another 168 golfers came on site. So that's more people to be kept safe, more people to be socially distanced, and enough sanitizer to clean up Manchester City Centre after New Year's Eve. Add into that the organization of the golf course, the food, the TV, just simple stuff like getting all the lanyards sorted. The security staff, which have been doing an amazing job making sure everyone's in the right areas. And you get the idea that organizing an event in these unprecedented times is just absolutely incredible. So to all the tournament staff that have been working pretty much 20 hours a day, just want to say a massive, massive thank you. And I thought it was worth pointing out some of the stuff which has been going on behind the scenes and the end product which you just get to watch. Okay, day two. It is day two of the Pro-Am and actually as a team, we're not doing too badly. We're currently fifth and I think we're only four shots off the leaders and in this format, anything can happen, including a sudden change of pitch apparently. We're absolutely hammering Liv Cook and Jazzy Golfer's team at the moment, so I think we're safe in that bet. We want to get into that top three at least. And here, by the way, for the second day is the trophy. Look how cool this is. So it's modeled on an Arabian coffee pot and we won't touch it. The next person to touch that without gloved hands will be the champion of the Omega Dubai Moonlight Classic. Okay, time once more to go into the furnace of battle. And when I say furnace, I mean an actual furnace. It is uh, toasty today. Above 30, a little bit more humidity, but there's no wind. So it's gonna be the survival of the fittest. Team is in fifth at the moment on 19 under. Jacob, do you think we can do it? Think yeah, we can get some Omegas? Absolutely, absolutely. I've heard the first prize is uh, an Omega Seamaster. And if not Omega, I've been struggling to tell the time all week. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> all the we all. Last hole of the day, the 10th to the par five. One more chance of glory. I'm not sure what we're doing team-wise, but it's actually quite similar to yesterday. I mean, so we had nine birdies, well, nine birdie putts yesterday, which was pretty incredible. I think I am maybe five under today. The format being tour scramble, there's no pressure. And like, if you're only gonna get a par, you can just pick it up. So there's no dramas, but I got a shot in here to the par five. As you can tell, I'm in need of an iced latte.
well done. Pro-Am, 36 holes completed. Uh, I think I had three birdies today, but then I had two eagles, which really does help the score along. I have absolutely no idea uh, what we've done team-wise, but we will find out. As long as I've beaten Jazzy and Liv, that's all I'm really bothered about. And of course, picking up a new Omega Seamaster. And of course, the pro experience would not have been quite as enjoyable without our wonderful pro, Alison Lee. So I just want to say massive thank you for actually putting up with us oh, over, no, the, no, over no, these two rounds. Fun. I had a lot of fun. And I mean, well, I mean, some of your performance over the first two days, yeah. what do you reckon? Have you enjoyed it? That's the, that's the first. Mm -hmm. It's good. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was really interesting to play an actual tournament round in the dark with yes. lights. I've never done that before. So, you know, it was really cool to experience. Obviously, not, I didn't play as well as I wanted to. It was a little more difficult reading putts last night. Um, but yeah, overall happy with my round today. And so I think it'll put me in a good position going into tomorrow. Yes, hope so. um, and yeah, I had so much fun with my group. I had so much fun with you guys. Peter played really, really well. Two eagles today. Eight birdies yesterday? Uh, nine, but who's counting? No. <laughs> okay, not well, me. I'm not, I'm not counting. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> the final day of the Omega Dubai Moonlight Classic dawns upon us, or should I say, sets upon us because the sun's going to go down and mood comes out light let's come on by the way i've got to show you this look down at the range here so you can see where they've moved the uh ropes back and where the players are going to be hitting from just how oh i think it, wow that is hot if you're a golfer that will look amazing if you are new to golf just that beautiful crisp untouched turf ready to take a massive fat chunk out of it so what we're going to do today is get out onto the course and follow the action as the sun starts to go down and the floodlights begin to come on. It's going to be a great event. The leaderboard is such a deep international field as well. So, so many interesting stories going on. But just generally looking forward to seeing a high class tournament under the lights. And also topping up my tan. Look, got my pure golfer's tan on the guard yesterday. So someone I was competing against in the Pro-Am is fellow content creator, fellow golf professional, but in this instance, a massive loser. We are talking about Olivia Cook. Where did your team finish? Oh gosh, I don't know. I can, about I... 30th, I think. But what was your experience on the Pro-Am? Did you enjoy it? That's the main thing. I had so much fun. Do you know what? At one stage, I think I wanted to cry. In <laughs> because happiness? What? In happiness, just to be here, really. You still lost, though. I, I did still lose. <laughs> Here on the range, about to head out onto the golf course to catch all of the evening's action. But before that takes place, I thought we'd also have a catch up with the second loser of the Pro Am. That's right, it's Jazzy Golfer. Uh, and just to get your experience, first of all, of the Pro Am and the week, because we've only got, well, a few hours left here now. So, have you enjoyed it? Oh, it's been fab. Yeah, it's been really, really good. And I think the playing in the daytime and playing in the nighttime is a really unique concept especially you know in a pro-am format whilst the pro is having their own competition yeah. so many different elements but yeah it was it was great fun um, and uh, i demand a recount start the count so we're by the 18th green we're going to wait for that winning put to be hold who knows who it's going to be i think celine boutier is currently leading although she has had a little bit of a snafu on the 16th she had a very weird shot kind of like a slicey healy duff <laughs> into the water and she's been striking it so well all day so maybe the nerves just get into her a touch but she still has that lead she's still probably been my favorite my pre-round pick of minji lee still rooting for her so we're going to settle here for the evening stay with us we'll see who wins I would call Celine's shot there a safety one. That wasn't going anywhere near the water. <laughs> So Celine has done all she can, solid par there, lovely up and down. Now it comes down to Minji Lee, can she birdie the last? What a shot, get in! Simple as this, Minji Lee has a 13 foot putt for victory. It's going to be slippery from where she is and it's going to be moving very slightly to her right hand side. Kind of a slippery downhill putt for the win. I'm not sure if that's better or worse because it's going to get to the hole as long as she commits to it. 
is if she gets a bit aggressive and then has a fidgety four-footer to get to the play on. I like I'm talking like she's a 12 handicapper. <laughs> Everyone we've seen on the screen has missed it low. I think it's because the grain is growing this way a little bit. Everyone's just missing on the low side. <laughs> Celine Boutier and Minji Lee head into a playoff which I believe is going to be on the 18th. I have nothing to substantiate that belief except a feeling and a hope that we don't have to move. So the playoff begins, Celine went a little bit off to the right, don't know if she's cleared the last bunker or not, Minji Lee just literally smashed it straight down the middle, a beautiful little raking five yard draw, so advantage Minji at this moment in time but couldn't quite tell if Celine cleared the bunker. If she has, she's still going to have the more difficult shot because she's coming over the corner of the water, mind you, the shot that Minji Lee hit into the last from that position literally went straight at it, so what do I know? Wow, what an amazing end to the event. Minji Lee, congratulations. That was not an easy putt. And in that kind of pressurized situation, it's just absolutely amazing. Just want to say a massive thank you to the organizers for getting us down. Just want to thank the uh, city of Dubai for providing that backdrop. It's been so amazing to be part of such a unique event and such a physical part of it as well. Play 36 holes in a pro-am with Alison Lee while she's in the tournament. And if you have enjoyed the event, I'm gonna throw some links into the description below so you can find out some more information about it. And hopefully this has given you a bit more of an insight into the women's game. It's something which I need to educate myself about a lot more. So hopefully this has opened a little bit of a window into some of the characters on this tour and of course into the amazing golf that they play. Last but not least, just wanna say a massive thank you everybody for watching and also to Omega for providing those flag sticks. How do I get my hands on one? That's really the parting question that I need to ask.